Hello everyone, and welcome to the first uh, quiz tutorial. I don't know if this is tutorial or solution, kind of a bit of both. Uh, basically what I'll be doing is I'll be going through all of the quizzes. I'll provide you guys the solutions as well as a kind of a little bit of a tutorial on how I got the answers, stuff like that. So hopefully this can help you make a little bit more sense of things because these quizzes are actually such a great way to study for the midterm and the final. As you guys will see when you get to the midterm practice and finals, a lot of the questions actually come from these quizzes. And they're in a very similar format where all the, the questions that you'll see in the final and the midterm, they're actually nice. They're kind of short. They're kind of sweet. I say kind of because some of them could be uh, kind of mean, but <laughs> don't worry about that too much for now. Uh, so yeah, that's what we'll be doing. And we'll be starting off with quiz number one, which is mathematical symbols. So these are uh, not so much important in uh, what you guys will need to know, but uh, a lot of the proofs and stuff involve these symbols because, uh, well, the bottom line is mathematicians are pretty lazy. They don't want to keep writing all the time, and let's be honest, neither do I. So what we do is we tend to use these symbols to kind of shorten things up, help the proofs look a little bit nicer, and even probably a little bit more fancy. Let's be honest, everyone likes to look fancy now and again, so... Uh, yeah, quiz one's really nice. We're given three sets of numbers. So we have set A, we have set B, and finally we have set C. And then we just go through and we're going to answer some true or false questions with, uh, well, let's be honest, this looks like Russian or some sort of uh, ancient language. But uh, uh, we're just going to go through that and we're going to figure out what is it asking and is the statement true or is it false. So looking at number A, the first one says, is B, oops, and I just erased it, off to a great start, <laughs> is B an element of A? So that little, uh, looks like a little E in the middle, that means element of A. And if we look up here, uh, the answer is going to be no, because an element is basically a number, and B itself is not a number, B is a set of numbers. So s calling B an element would actually be incorrect. So this statement right here, because B is a, a set and not an element, this one right here is just, just straight up going to be false. Now, it can be modified to uh, what it says in part B, where it says, is B a subset of A? So by changing that little fancy E to a fancy C, even though they're not C's and E's, <laughs> uh, that changes from element to subset. And what a subset means is basically are all the numbers that are found in B also found in A. And if we look at B, well, we got 2, we have 4, and we have 20. And then if we look at A, we have 2, we have 4, and we have 20. So yes, all the numbers that we see in B are also found in A. So B is actually a subset of A. So the second statement right here is absolutely true. All right, so these are kind of the, the, the easy ones. And I'm just going to erase this for uh, future clarity or else everything's going to be highlighted before I know it. So now we're going to get into the ones that you'll see more commonly. And this is that, uh, that V with uh, kind of a line through it or... What, to me, it looks like an upside down A. That's what I'm going to call it, the upside down A. And that, what that means right there is for every. So if we were just to read this going from left to right as usual, it says for every X element in A, that X element also exists in B. So what is this saying is that every number that is found in set A is also found in set B. And just by looking at A right here, we see that we have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. And I did one of the numbers wrong. I'm just going to erase this. Sorry, guys. Little technical difficulties here. That's actually a four. So, oh, I must have erased it earlier. So just by telling, we see that there's obviously more numbers in A than B. So there's no possible way that every number found in A is found in B. It's just impossible. So we know that this statement right here is absolutely false. So I'm going to put false because A has more numbers than B. There's no way that every number in A also appears in B. So I'm just going to erase, uh, erase the highlighting. And now we're going to move on to the, the opposite, because what part D asks, for every number in B, that number is also found in A. And I should be saying element, not number, but I'm just trying to make this a little simpler. For every number in B, that number is in A. And if we look, that's actually very similar to question B. Because if we look, we have the 2, we have the 4, and we have the 20. And if we look at A, we have the 2, we have the 4, and the 20. So we can conclude that yes, the statement is true because every number that we found in B does appear in A. So this statement right here is true. We can just write true. Good to go. Now we're getting into the, the kind of the, the juicier section of it. 
and sorry, just quick a little erase. And this is that backwards E. So this is why this looks like complete nonsense. If I were to show this to, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, a doctor of medicine, even they're gonna look at you like, what are you doing? This is this is crazy. It's hieroglyphics even. All right. So the backwards E, instead of for every like the upside down A, the backwards E means that there exists. So instead of for every we only have to find one that exists. So basically what this is asking is there exists an ele element or there exists a number in A that also exists in C. So if we go up here and we look at A, we see that A has a one and C has a one. So yes, there does exist an element in A that also exists in C. So this value right here, or I guess the statement, statement D, this is going to be true. And if we look down to the next question, number F, it's the exact same thing. And the only difference is this little, little explanation point right there. And what that means is that there exists an element and it's unique. So what this is reading, if we just go uh, left, right, is there exists a unique element in A that also exists in C. And I kept them highlighted because, yes, this is basically the exact same as last question. Uh, one exists in A and it also exists in C. So this right here, this is 100% true, and we can put that as true. See, the quizzes are nice and easy, guys. Don't have to, don't have to worry too much about them. They're just a nice little learning guide. And then the last question, it uh, kind of goes back to what we had before, and it looks like I got too crazy and decided to uh, erase more than I should have. This is a C right here. So if we were just to read this out, it says that there exists an element in C that also exists in B. So if we look up here, there exists an element of C. So if we look at C, we got one in 40. And what the statement is saying is that one of those also exists in B. And if we look at B, we got a two, a four, and a 20, which none of those match C at all. So this statement right here is actually false because there is no element in C that also appears in B. And that's it, guys. So I'll just uh, kind of keep it here over the answers for you guys. But yeah, that's it. That's uh, quiz number one. Uh, some quizzes will be longer than this. Some are, uh, well, shorter would maybe be a stretch because this, <laughs> this was already pretty quick. But uh, yeah, not too bad. And again, these are framed very much like the, the exams that you guys will see. So doing these is a great way to kind of prepare yourself for those exams. So thank you guys all so much for listening in uh, quiz number one. I, I hope it was a little bit helpful trying to decipher these hieroglyphs. I know that they uh, make you want to throw up sometimes, but uh, <laughs> don't worry about it. We'll get through it together. All right, guys. Thanks again for listening. I'll see you guys in quiz number two.